Awesome. Because I will forget if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Started multiple webinars where I realized that I did not hit record about a minute or two in. going on our Facebook Live as well. Thanks everybody for joining us. We are, um, we will kick off in just a second. I'm gonna give just a minute for people to log on. We are now officially streaming live on Facebook. Nice. So exciting. <laughs> like multiple platforms streaming. All right. I'll go ahead and take this off since um, it's 12.03, and I will just let people in as they arrive. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, my name is Caleb Talley. For those of uh, you that have not met yet, I'm the uh, Director of Marketing and Events uh, at Startup Junkie. And for those who are uh, not familiar with Startup Junkie, we are a mission-driven organization based uh, here in Northwest Arkansas that exists to empower uh, innovators and entrepreneurs, small business owners. We do that through one-on-one -on -one consulting, which is virtual, of course, nowadays, and through um, events uh, like these um, that we hope um, you know, are beneficial to all of our um, small business and entrepreneur communities. We also have partners in central Arkansas. I know with being virtual um, and geography not being an issue for us, we usually get um, you know, viewers and attendees from all over the state. Uh, and so for those that are uh, in central Arkansas, we have our partners conductor that are there to help uh, carry out the same mission. Um, so our topic today is mental wellness for small businesses. Uh, this is an evergreen topic that should be highlighted year round, um, but it is uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so we thought it would be a great opportunity to partner with Allison and Terry uh, to bring this uh, presentation to our small business community. I'm really excited. Uh, to have them as our presenters today, and I will um, give them uh, the introduction they deserve. Allison Nell Malone is a professional coach who engages community leaders in companies and in communities who are committed to creating an employee and constituent experience that produces a healthy workplace that is purpose-driven and fulfilling. Allison and her team of coaches lead a thought-provoking creating process that inspires you and your team to maximize personal and professional potential. I'm reading this, of course, because I would not be able to remember all that without reading it. Uh, Terry Hun Honeysuckle is a intuitive and mindful educator, yoga teacher, and group leader. She is in her last semester of graduate school at the University of Arkansas and will be receiving her Master's of Science in Counseling in May or this month, and congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, she will finalize state requirements as a licensed associate counselor and will be taking therapy clients this summer. Um, so that's exciting. So I'm going to turn it over to you two. Hi, thank you so much, Caleb. I appreciate that. And, and Terry and I are so excited to see each one of you that are watching this live. And of course, those of you that'll be joining us in the replay. Um, this is a topic that both Terry and I are incredibly passionate about. And we'll both share a little bit about why that is true for us. So thank you for taking the time out to show up today, um, whether that's for yourself, for your business, for your team, or for your community at large. And so, 
um, before we get started, we have three engagement agreements. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page before we fully dive in. And number one, we're just going to ask that you be engaged and be present. And, and being present means, hey, I know life is happening. We've got dogs and children that might be coming in, and that's totally cool, and things happen. But what we just ask is you show up for yourself and the reasons why you showed up today and just be present with that. Number two is to be engaged. So we're going to have plenty of opportunity for you to engage with Terry and I. So as a teaser, have your phones ready or a web browser ready because we're going to engage with you on that. You can always engage with us on the chat as well. Caleb is going to be um, watching that for us. So absolutely during the time that when Terry and I are sharing information, if you have questions or comments, put those in the chat as well and Caleb will let us know. And then last but not least is, is to be open. Now, Terry and I are going to share information that you've probably heard before, that you've probably read before, but we're hoping that there'll be some tidbits in there that you haven't read or seen before. But even if you have, just be open to seeing if there's something new that you can gain from that information or have a recommitment to awareness around mental health and wellness. And so before we get started, I am going to turn off my camera to increase some bandwidth. I'm in an interesting location where my internet's a little bit slow, so um, I promise I'll be here. But uh, let's go ahead and, and get started. So the conversation today is around mental health and wellness. And as the world, including our work world, has um, entirely shifted under our feet in the last couple of months, uh, the speed of disruption and uncertainty created by the pandemic has uh, moved business leaders into overdrive to lay the groundwork for strategies to help people manage through the next phase with their jobs, their health, and their sanity intact. And so today we want to discuss uh, these four things. Number one is is the hope is that you'll engage in strategies for managing your own mental wellness, particularly during COVID-19, um, to explore the importance of self-regulation and modeling that adaptive and agile behavior with that to identify practical ways to promote healthy habits, to increase not just your positive um, mood, but also to reduce any of the withdrawal that tends to happen in particularly situations like this where we tend to be a little bit more isolated. And then of course, um, to help give you some tools and resources on communication te techniques to ensure conflict is kept to a minimum, but also um, that you, have the opportunity to continue to increase your mental health and wellness during this time. So business leaders and owners are rightly hyper-focused on the importance of helping keep people physically healthy right now, as well as our businesses healthy. From supporting social distancing with the technology needed to work productively from home, to new hygiene standards for essential workers and workplaces, to introducing COVID-19 responsive sick and family leave policies. But an issue of singular importance for the sustainability for your success as a business owner, uh, particularly a leader of people, is to create that sustainability of maintaining mental health and wellness throughout this crisis. And the crisis is starting to shift and change. And, and, and to the fortunate side, it's helped us shift and change our way of being and thinking as well. And in this time of COVID-19, mental health is workforce health. It is personal health. And its foundation to overall health and maintaining your mental health, as well as the people who work for you and with you right now, is a fundamental priority for maintaining the health of your business. Based on multiple conversations that I've had with expert colleagues, as well as other business owners, we've all experienced at some point some extreme stress, potentially for, uh, fear, and potentially even burnout because of those precursors of that long lasting uncertainty that we are experiencing. 
And so we must preventatively and proactively manage throughout this current uncertainty um, to be able to participate in emerging new reality of how we manage through this. So I, I just want to share a personal story of why I'm so passionate about this. And so in my own personal life, mental health and wellness has not only become a priority, but a passion also to bring to the forefront to the conversations in leadership and business world ownership. About four years ago, I underwent a life-saving procedure that altered my perception and experience about mental health. Prior to, to the surgery, um, while I knew intellectually that mental health and wellness were important, since I had been an HR practitioner or human resources practitioner for over 15 years, I did not person, personally identify with how this would apply to me. And so prior to surgery, I had experienced, you know, ups and downs, but wouldn't necessarily categorize it as mental health issue. However, after this life-changing event, after my surgery, I began to notice how my levels of irritation significantly increased, which brought on quite honestly, some anger and severe lack of communication and what was later diagnosed with PTSD and generalized depression. And it had impacted every facet of my life. And as a prominent leader within my professional discipline and as an aspiring business owner at the time, I was terrified to let people know that I was really struggling. I couldn't focus on all the business aspects and tasks of my career and my company. My relationships began to be a little bit harder to navigate, and physically I struggled to maintain healthy choices. And so it wasn't until I was challenged in a business course to go live every day on Facebook for one month to tell my story, and when you know, that's when it sort of accidentally came out that I was diagnosed with this de with depression and that I was really struggling with that. And through that storytelling, more than 100 business owners and professional leaders just in the Northwest Arkansas area alone reached out and said, thank you and me too. And I realized then that while I'm not the clinical mental health professional, I was going to talk about this necessary topic. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be go public like me, but however, acknowledging and supporting yourself through this life-changing event, otherwise known as COVID, is vital to your mental health and wellness, which will also set you and your business up for sustainable and long-term healthiness, whether that's personal, business, financial health, client and community impact in that health. So let's get started to our first engagement activity. So what I would love for you to do is to get out your phone or open up another browser on your PC. And I use this uh, tool called Poll Everywhere. And this is a great way for if you do any kind of uh, meetings with your clients or a group of people, Poll Everywhere is a great way to um, get in touch and really kind of measure the temperature of your people. And so what you'll want to do is get, um, uh, I'm going to ask you a question and you'll use your phone, tablet, or laptop to respond. Um, and you'll, you'll participate by sending a text message or visiting the URL from any web browser. You don't need to download anything. And so I'll do a question um, and then what you'll do is take out your device. And if you are going to text, you'll start a new text message. You'll put in this five digit code, the 22333, in the two line, type this username, and that's Allison N67, and then space, and then you'll enter in your answer in the body of the message and then hit send. If you want to do this by web browser, just visit pollev.com, and then you'll also put in Allison N67, Allison N67, and then wait for the question to appear and respond with a tap. So, our first question today. What prompted you to attend today's conversation? Was it to learn mental wellness strategies? Oh, and so you know, these responses are completely anonymous. So no one will know that it's you. I won't know that it's you. Even if I go back and look at these, I won't know. Um, to learn mental wellness strategies, or maybe you're really stressed out and want supportive resources. Perhaps maybe your employees or the teams that you work with are really stressed and you just need to know what are some of the resources that are out there. 
Maybe it's to support the entrepreneurial community or support your community in general, or maybe you're just curious about this topic. And so you just can choose one of these options here. And having this kind of engagement really helps Terry and I customize in the moment what we talk about and what we really want to focus on. So I love seeing that a lot of this is centered around the support of your community and that you're looking for strategies not only to support your community, but also um, strategies that could potentially support you or someone that you know. We'll give it just a few more seconds here before I lock this up. <clears throat> awesome. I think this is awesome. And I really appreciate the willingness to want to know, one, what are those strategies that I can use personally, but also what are the strategies um, and ways that I could support my community too? So I just want to throw this uh, infographic up here because I want to continue to normalize this topic. The American Psychological Association defines mental health or mental illness as a health condition that involves changes in emotion, thinking, or behavior. It can also be a combination of that and are associated with distress or problems functioning in social work or family activities. And these can be triggered by anything. And what we're experiencing in this space right now is this level of stress and anxiety and other mental health challenges has increased. And so as you can see here, one in five adults experience some kind of mental illness. And remember, this is based on those who report publicly. And a lot of the research shows that this actually gets bumped up um, as particularly when um, things are pretty intense overall. And so um, I'm gonna have Terry talk a little bit more about anxiety and stress and how in this time, how does that relate to us and what do we start looking at and acknowledging moving forward? Okay. So um, first of all, I wanna share that I, started being um, an entrepreneur in the yoga world and back in 2010 and through that time opened a couple of yoga studios and um, I understand that your business is your passion it was my passion and at times it also felt very lonely so um, you know just a reminder that everyone experiences stress and anxiety and that's not going to change. We can't control the outside world and what happens, but knowing the difference between stress and anxiety and applying some self-regulation practices can help us control how our minds and bodies respond to stressful events. So stress is a reaction to a threat event and anxiety is a reaction to the stress. In some ways you could kind of think of anxiety as a stress hangover that occurs when we don't have the appropriate tools to cope with stress in an efficient and timely manner. And this lingering effect is what over time is most harmful to our health. And then Allison, you can go on to the next one. We may have lost her. Caleb, can you find Allison? Yeah, give me just a second. I'm going to share a message and see, make sure. Okay. This is just the joys of virtual <laughs> yeah there she is <laughs> okay can you all hear me now yeah uh-huh okay <laughs> i'm not sure you? what happened <laughs> sorry about that everybody it's all right so it's the main surprised. question here is you know why is it hard for us to ask for help it's easy to talk about how stressed how stressed out we feel or maybe we're feeling a little anxious but when it becomes more what it becomes more difficult to talk about 
that anxiety and stress may actually be significantly impacting our everyday life, thinking or working. Because there's a lot of stigma that comes around acknowledging even to ourselves that we're experiencing a mental wellness challenge. And as business owners, as, as Terry mentioned earlier, you know, this it's, we're so passionate about why we're doing what we're doing. And that often comes with the idea that we have to have it all together and that we have to display that with certainty all the time. And particularly during COVID, there really has been this increase of feeling like we've got to have this all together because our business might have already been effective if, effective, if not long term. Oftentimes it's hard for us to ask for help too because we're not necessarily sure who to ask or perhaps um, we feel somewhat um, inadequate or uncertain because I should be able to handle this too. Um, there's also some sense of distress because there's so much information that's out there that can either feel too much or not enough. And of course, COVID has also uncovered a lot of practical barriers like financial and location wise that make it difficult for us to ask for help. And then of course, there's cultural indicators that also impact this. And research shows us that vulnerability and acknowledging this space actually develops and promotes trust within ourselves, within our teams and our clients. And so when does stress actually become a problem? So when stress builds up, when it's not acknowledged and or not self-regulated, your whole being is affected. On your body, it's, it's headaches, it can be muscle tension or pain, chest pains, extreme fatigue, um, some stomach upset or sleep problems like not enough or too much and your mood starts changing. So first it shows up in our body and then our mood starts to shift where we could potentially have lack of motivation or focus or maybe we're hyper-focused on one thing. We become overwhelmed and tend to have a little lower toler tolerance with increased irritability. Um, and even through this, a lot of people have experienced um, levels of grief because our schedules have shifted, our connections have changed or gone non-existent. And so we feel a general sense of sadness and then our behavior starts to change, um, either overeating or undereating. Um, maybe there's outbursts that have happened, uh, or some for some might be drug or alcohol misuse, uh, social withdrawal, or maybe even less physically active. And when all of, when you combine all of these things, it can make it really difficult to stay focused and motivated on our businesses. Yes, um, and I just want to echo what what Allison said and. And um, there was actually a, a study done by the National Institute of Health in 2011. Um, they did a study on people who regularly experienced panic attacks. And panic attacks can occur from a buildup of fears or stress in our minds. The participants in the study were monitored with EKG equipment and it was found that autonomic changes in the body occurred up to 47 minutes prior to what these participants perceived as an unexpected panic attack. So mindfulness and self-regulation, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, um, these techniques develop our ability to recognize when our body is signaling for help much earlier. And at the same time, these practices can increase our window of tolerance for stress when it does occur. But left unaddressed, the effects of stressful events change the way that our brain communicates with our nervous system and our immune system. And this disruption of communication between our brain and our body can worsen diseases that those systems guard against. So trying to ignore or suppress our emotions, thinking, behavior, or the signs of our body and our bodies that are associated with stressful events, really ignoring them and, and trying to push them off to the side is the, the most unhelpful and most harmful thing in the long run. So our next question is this, um, and we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper into this. Terry and I are gonna talk more about 
um, how mindfulness can really support you or the individuals around you. And then this idea of self-care, or really we like to call it self-regulation. And so I'm curious for you, have, um, how would you define um, or what's the difference between, or what, I'm sorry, what do they have in common? Mindfulness and self-care, the way that you understand it. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, for our business and sustainability, health and wellness, um, that self-regulation is really powerful here, and mindfulness techniques. And, and Terry's going to talk a little bit more about that. So I'm curious for you, what does mindfulness and self-care or self-regulation have in common? And again, you'll want to um, either use uh, text 22333, and then you can just write in a couple of words or a sentence or in the web browser at pollev.com, Allison N677, and type in your response there. So when you think of the word mindfulness or self-care or self-regulation, what do you think these have in common or how would you define them? You know, Allison, and I'll jump in here and just add, you know, I talk about mindfulness quite a bit. And what I find is that folks generally um, think about self-care as things like getting a pedicure or a massage, you know, and, and that can be part of it, um, but it, it's not all of it. And self-regulation, which we'll talk about more in just a second, is similar to that, but just more intentional. So I just wonder if anybody else, when you think of self-care and, you know, does that, what comes to mind for you? Oh, great. So there's a response already. Perhaps you need mindfulness to realize what type of self-care is going to work best for you. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And to even know when you need it. Like, when are you getting to the edges of that window of tolerance, so to speak? Nervous system regulation and grounding. Perfect. Mindfulness is being aware of yourself so that you can actually practice self-care and regulation, allowing yourself re release, uh, to release stress, etc. Awesome. Yeah, and somebody's mentioned like, yes, that, that's, yeah, I'm feeling that too. Mm -hmm. Self-care requires mindfulness to be effective. Awesome. Perfect. 100%. So Terry, um, why don't you share with us a little bit about how we adapt and what are some of those strategies for self-regulation? Okay, yeah, so um, self-regulation, physiologically, so like I said, it's a little more intentional than self-care and physiologically, self-regulation um, is our ability to reduce or stop the cascade effects of the stress response. Right, so the, earlier when we talked about the difference between stress and anxiety, so the stress is like the actual threat event. Catching yourself in the act, like recognizing when that's happening and being able to stop the effects. Um, so emotionally, self-regulation is the ability to control one's mind. So for example, the ability to pick yourself up when you're down or the ability to calm yourself down when you're feeling activated or triggered. And behaviorally, self-regulation is the ability to act in your own long-term best interest. I love that. I'm going to say it again. So self-regulation is the ability to act in your own long-term best interest consistent with your deepest values, right? So you're not just putting yourself aside. You're really honoring your own values. Self-regulation is not complicated but it does require some dedicated effort. And it may take weeks or months before using whatever practices you like um, feel natural. And I'll put this little asterisk here as well. So it's really important to practice self-regulation techniques. And we're gonna, I'm just gonna go over just a couple in the next few slides. It's important to practice them regularly when you're not feeling activated or triggered or stressed, because if you don't practice them, you know, in your kind of normal course of everyday life, they're not going to help you when you really need them. So um, when you want them to work in a, a crisis, it's like a consistent daily practice to start with. 
Yeah. So Terry is going to dive in in just a few moments, a little bit deeper. And so I just want to share just a few uh, practices and strategies. Again, some of these you have probably read, seen, heard, or maybe even practiced yourself. And then Terry is going to take it just a little bit deeper. And so Terry mentioned that really the care for self is the way to act in your own long-term best interest. And we talk about you first before we talk about your business, before we talk about anyone else, because I'm sure many of you have um, flown on a flight or knowing somebody who's flown on a flight, and the first thing they talk about when there's an emergency, that the oxygen mask, when it comes down, that you put it on yourself first before you put it on anyone else. And this is so that you actually have the capability to stay alive, to help other people. And this is the same thing when we talk about stress and anxiety or any mental health challenge, and um, whether that is just in the moment or long term, we have to take care of ourselves first. And so some of these strategies are to make sure that you're creating some kind of schedule. It doesn't have to look like the pre-COVID schedule, which I know a lot of people have tried to maintain, and it just doesn't work. And so being allowed to give yourself some flexibility, but build in some sustainable and consistent things that every day that remain the same so that there's a level of certainty. Stay connected, create that time to stay active, um, and then stay informed with scientifically backed sources, but honestly, just don't spend too much time there because there's a ton of information out there, but keep yourself informed. And then this is one that I'm very passionate about in sharing too. Um, and Terry and I both have educated other, um, you know, had workshops on how to continue to set boundaries for ourselves. And it's so important right now because both from essential and frontline workers or people who are working in front of people and in virtual spaces, there has been an increase of high levels of expectations on the hours that we work um, and how we show up in that space. So be really clear about the healthy kinds of boundaries that you need in order to be sustainable through COVID and after COVID. And then of course, you wanna think about ways that you can, what, what is called distract and redirect. And really all that is, is to um, find things that you have some passion around or want to learn something of to redirect the anxiety or stress that you're feeling, to focus it in a direction that could be really supportive in the moment. And then of course, get creative, get curious. Um, this is a really great time as business owners to make sure that we're staying in alignment with our passion and purpose on yes we serve today but also who and how can we serve our customers and clients of tomorrow and then as we talk again um, here in just a few moments Terry's going to dive in a little bit deeper into that mindfulness practice of self-regulation and what that consistency looks like okay so what you're looking at is called a hexaflex um, it's a visual representation of a type of therapy called acceptance and commitment therapy that I like to use with clients. Um, it's a Western psychological model of Eastern concept of mindfulness, which is why I like it. Um, and I'm only going to focus on two of the components today that if practiced over time will make a huge impact on your ability to balance and cope with daily stresses, increase your window of tolerance, and develop psychological flexibility. So the first one is the one at the top, and it's called contact with the present moment. And Allison, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So contact with the present moment is just like what it says, um, how to step into the present moment. And the, the easiest way to do that is with your breath, right? So your breath is always with you. You can't breathe in the past or the future. So just by taking a few moments, as little as five, or maybe even right when you wake up in the morning and you're not out of bed yet, just focus on 10 breaths. Um, usually what I do is I'll get up, start the coffee pot, and then go sit and breathe until the coffee's done. <laughs> so you can find a way to, to fit it in. It doesn't have to be a long time or complicated, or you can just do it even as you drive in your car, just noticing your breath. You simply watch your breath without trying to do anything with it. So 
You can breathe deeply if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just watch your natural breath and observe during that time what's going on in your mind and body, observing your thoughts and any sensations in your body and doing all of that non-judgmentally. That word non-judgmentally just means to be willing to allow or accept anything that is part of your present moment experience, no matter what it is, without giving it meaning. Now, doing this, while it sounds simple, when folks first start practicing mindfulness in this way, sometimes it feels uncomfortable. And if your mind really needs something else to do other than just sit and notice your breath, there's one that I, I give clients a lot. It's called the 54321 exercise. And when you're feeling, you know, triggered or stressed or anxious, you can name, stop and name five things that you see, four things that you feel, three things that you hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. So you're involving all of your senses um, in the ability to ground yourself in the present moment. And then go ahead to the next slide, Allison. And then the next one on the Hexaflex, um, the other one I wanted to talk about is called cognitive diffusion. Um, and you can kind of see in this picture, our little guy is sad when he's attached to, identified with, or fused with this thought, I'm not good enough. As, as if he is the thing that isn't good enough. But if he can practice catching himself in the act of being triggered by the stress event that caused this thought, he can use cognitive diffusion to slow down and create compassionate mental space for himself. He becomes an observer to what's happening rather than being defined by it. He can add the words, I'm noticing that I'm having the thought that I'm not good enough. So you can see how that amount of compassionate mental space changes his his demeanor like it gives us a broader perspective on what's happening instead of being fused with it so that's developing your inner observer and it's called cognitive diffusion you're just kind of making space or pulling apart um, identifying with the with the thoughts and then um, you can go on to the next yeah slide mindfulness really is the combination of making contact with the present moment and practicing that cognitive diffusion. Non-judgmentally observing yourself in the present moment creates that compassionate mental space that will help mitigate the communication disruption between your brain and body. So this helps your nervous and immune systems keep doing what they need to do rather than being hijacked by anxiety. And so while it is simple, it requires some some dedication and consistent practice when you're not feeling triggered if you you know when we want it to work in those times where we really need it it requires us practicing it just a little bit every day awesome thank you terry and and kayla before we start moving forward with the last couple uh, sections of our conversation i just wanted to stop and see if anyone had any questions or um, comments or thoughts around what Terry and I have been discussing so far, um, and I just wanna check in with everyone right now for the next couple of minutes before we dive further in. Absolutely, if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and you can ask the question, or if you would prefer uh, to stay muted and drop your question in the chat box, I will read it um, uh, out loud. Um, and so while people may be thinking about what to share, um, the next topic that uh, we're going to be talking about is um, how to support the people that work with and for you. And then um, talk a little bit of what those next steps look like. So ways that we can use communication, um, what are some additional resources that we can um, either share out or use for ourselves. And then Terry and I will have an opportunity to be able to um, answer any questions or brainstorm with you um, on hypothetical situation, or this is a situation that I know of, and we'd be happy to brainstorm with you. So Caleb, I just wanna check in with you before we move on. Sure, and uh, it doesn't look like we have any questions yet. I have okay. a question. Oh yeah, go ahead, Morgan. Hi, 
Oh, um, so I like this notion you talked about earlier of like distract and redirect. Is that sort of, do you feel like that's sort of a moment by moment practice? Like I'm feeling, you know, the, the, I'm feeling anxiety as a reaction to, you know, the, the threat of stress or the, the feeling of threat that's, um, makes me feel stressed or is that, and, and, you know, in that moment, do I need to like, okay, wait, I'm, I'm going to go like get a cup of coffee and feel better. Or is it sort of like a, like a practice, like I want to take up um, knitting and engage or participate in in a, a different like intentional activity on a daily basis that is, you know, life giving or creative or something like that. Yeah, that's a great question, Morgan. Thank you for that. And so um, it's yes. And and I think part of that is what's happening, where you're at, and what's the um, accessibility or practicality of what you have accessible to you in that moment. So um, the techniques that Terry talked about, mm -hmm. in the most ideal time, in the most ideal space to practice those mindfulness uh, breathing techniques or, or being mindful of the thought of how you're feeling or thinking is the most ideal. Um, and sometimes if you haven't had the opportunity to practice that or that's not the first thing that comes to mind, the quote unquote di distract and redirect is an opportunity to go, okay, yes, I need to go get a coffee, but maybe with that coffee, I'm going to go walk around the block mm. or um, I need to call a friend or um, some way to help just kind of distract in just that moment, particularly if, you're, if that emotion happens really quickly, or maybe even if it's built up over time and you feel like, um, I think I've just about had enough. Mm -hmm. And so what is a specific action that I can do right now? What's one thing that I can do right now that'll help just distract my, me for a minute and redirect my attention to gratitude? to a, a particular action item that needs to get done, or um, I need support. So it depends on the person, it depends on what's going on, depends on what's accessible to you and, and what's happening to you and how you're feeling in the moment. Um, the, and again, the most ideal way is to have some kind of intentional practice that helps. So if knitting is one of those things, making sure that you have that available to you in your office space or if you're working from home, um, to have that available. If you're someone that has to work a frontline role, that, that might be a little bit more challenging. So what is one thing, just one thing that I can do to make myself feel more calm or feel more fulfilled or feel more grounded? Like what's that 1% thing that I can do? Mm -hmm. And maybe that is, okay, I need to just step outside and take a breath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank you. I agree. Anything that helps you reconnect with the present moment, whatever that is, doing that thing. Um, because you can remember there's the definition of anxiety is that it's uncomfortable thoughts about the future. So when we're feeling all that, we, we aren't actually present. Like our body is where it is, but our mind may be off somewhere else. So how can you bring like the five, four, three, two, one, how can you bring your whole self back in connection with the present moment. And that could be getting a coffee or going for a walk or knitting. Mm -hmm. Have several things, have several self-regulation tools or activities in your toolbox that you can pull out. You, you may not be able to knit everywhere, right? Or go get a coffee. So what can you do? Anything that brings you back in the present moment. That's great. Was that helpful? Did that answer your question, Morgan? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, and Caleb, are there any other questions or is there anyone else that would like to ask a question before we move on? We don't have any in the uh, chat bar right now. Okay, excellent. So I just want to touch on for those of you that have employees and this can be people who are on your payroll or their contract employees. Um, and I also think about this as far as people that you have some partnership with that you help um, direct uh, actions for your business that you may be in contact with. And so, um, so this is, can be just expanded beyond just the people who work for you, but the people who work with you. And so adaptability with those individuals is, is truly a key to sustaining a healthy business and mental well-being of those individuals that we are in touch with. 
And all of us can probably recognize at least some of the feelings that we've described earlier and may have felt stressed or overwhelmed at some point or another, but particularly right now. Acknowledge that some people seem to be more affected by stress than others. For some, just getting out the door on time in the morning can be a very stressful experience, especially if you have kids. Or recognizing that there are life events happening behind their closed doors that we are unaware of, and that impacts how they show up at or in their work, whereas others may be able to cope with a great deal of pressure. With some groups of people, they might be more likely to experience stressful life events and situations than others. For example, um, those um, in your life, they might be living with high levels of debt or financial insecurity, or they are more likely to experience stress related to money or people in marginalized ethnic groups or whose identity is different from ours, they may likely um, be more likely to experience stress due to prejudice or discrimination. And people with pre-existing or ongoing health problems may be more likely to experience stress related to health or stress due to stigma associated with their condition. So we as business leaders um, also can be, need to be aware and mindful of how others experience stress, particularly when you have people who work with and for you. So some key strategies to think about. Number one is to um, express empathy and be available. And the best way to do that is just to ask open-ended questions with permission. So something, it might sound something like, hey, I noticed that um, you are very anxious right now, or you seem really angry, or you seem really sad. May I ask what's going on, or how can I support you? You don't have to get into all the details, but for most people, when they feel acknowledged and heard, that stress or anxiety or sadness they may, may feel may be lifted just a little. Make sure that you are staying connected with the people who work with and for you. Be mindful of Zoom fatigue. So um, one of the practices that I've been doing with people that I connect with and those that are um, contract workers with me is when I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them, I always give them the option, hey, I know we're all doing Zoom meetings, so we can do a Zoom meeting or we can do a phone call or we can just use the number um, through Zoom or whatever, uh, virtual tool that you use. And just be mindful that being on all the time can pre be pretty exhausting, not just for yourself, but for those that you're connecting with. Recognize the impact of isolation and loneliness. Working virtual is not for everyone. And uh, even now that we're kind of in month three, even those like myself who are pretty introverted, like staying inside has been pretty difficult. And I'm just now starting to feel kind of that sense of loneliness. Also, if you do have a team of people, encourage that they utilize this time for personal and professional development and walk through that with them. And then of course, if your business does offer health insurance, um, check to see if there's an employee assistance plan. Typically in that employee assistance plan, there's opportunity for free um, mental health check-ins with a counselor or a therapist. And then of course, you always wanna make sure that you're providing a space that's psychologically safe and that it's confidential. So when someone does share that they're experiencing some kind of challenge, that you keep that between the two of you and then just ask, what do you need from me to help support you through that process? So Terry, can you check in, tell us a little bit about some of the next steps that we can do? And I'll jump into here um, on a few of these, but I'd love to hear from you a little bit about some of the resources and the next steps that we can do in moving forward. Um, yes, so right now, the um, as far as mental health counseling, free mental health counseling, the University of Arkansas um, through the Pat Walker Health Center is offering free care to the community, which is something they have not done before. Um, and I was interning with them my last year. And um, so it's a great resource and they'll keep it going as long as, as um, folks need it and respond. So, and um, Caleb has the information, I believe that he um, 
either emailed it out or put it up on the Facebook page, how to get in contact with Pat Walker Health to set up an appointment. Um, and then, like I say, don't make anything really hard on yourself. Like, do not expect tomorrow to get up and have a formal seated meditation for 20 to 30 minutes if you've never done it before. When you wake up in the morning, like, make it as simple as possible. Maybe just 10 breaths that you're aware of and then move on. Right? So, and you can, you can find steal little moments throughout your day like driving in your car turn off the radio and just be really present feel your hands on the steering wheel feel your your bottom in the seat you know just you can do i i like to call it dynamic mindfulness you don't have to just sit on a cushion for hours you can practice observing yourself and observing your breath as much as you want to throughout the day so if it feels complicated and you're not having fun, you're not going to continue it. So have um, play a little game with yourself, like that guy noticing his thoughts in that um, in that slide. I used to like walk around and think, um, "Wow, gosh, notice I'm I'm really angry," and then I would stop and ask myself, "Who's angry?" and just play a little game to try to figure out what it was that actually triggered me because thoughts and emotions are different right but they're really connected you have an emotion that creates a thought you have a thought that creates an emotion so our job in observation and mindfulness is to just like give ourselves the space to be able to kind of tease those apart and get information about ourselves yeah thank you for that and also um when caleb shares out um with everyone in this recording and then also we'll be able to share some communication models that you can use in order to navigate having um, conversations with your clients or with the people that work with and for you that really help support through this process so you don't have to think about it too much there's this framework that will be given to you that you can basically fill in the blanks to support you in any kind of conversation um, the communication right now has been pretty tense um, and and it can feel like it's challenging or feel like it's too much. Um, but this, the communication models that we'll be giving you will be really supportive. Um, as Terry mentioned, there's free and discounted support and we'll show you a few more items um, in that space. There's a lot of apps that can help with mindfulness um, or just being present in the moment. Um, you want to continue creating um, a, accomplishment plans that um, that feel supportive in, in your process. And then of course, expressing daily gratitude and mindfulness. And then just a few other things. Um, there's a lot of tools and resources um, that are available should you need to seek additional information or additional support. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of benefit programs have employee assistant programs. Um, there's a ton of resources online. Um, Betterhelp.com is a great resource for online therapy. Um, there's open counseling um, that also provides discounted counseling services. And then of course, getting your information from the Center for Disease Control, World Health Organization. And then if you have anyone that wants additional tools or resources, the National Alliance on Mental Illness and the Center for Workplace Mental Health is, are great uh, websites to send that to other people. And as business owners, these are really great resources and they have a ton of free uh, information and infographics and um, direction on how to support your employees or those that work for and with you. You, um, or, or in partnership with you. They also have a great, uh, great resources for you to utilize as well. So we are getting close to the end of our time and we want to make sure that we honor your time. And so what I'd love to hear from you um, based on our conversation today, and you can either put this in the chat or you can type here, what might be one strategy that you will implement right away that we've talked about today? Or what was most useful for you today um, in their conversation today? Uh, yeah, utilizing the four, five, three, two, one. Distancing your thoughts, yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe for you, it was, um, these were things that you knew already, but maybe it just affirmed or reaffirmed, um, you know, things that you're doing today. Yes, the difference between stress and anxiety. <laughs> yeah, I, I like thinking about the 
the stress hangover. (laughs) How to step into the present moment, 100%. Oh, I love this too. Focusing on breathing and distancing my thoughts, practices I've used in the past but got away from. Yeah. I appreciate that, um, that kind of acknowledgement. Uh, during self regu- or defining self regulation, everyone always says self care, which is yeah. normally just self soothing, and does not always have lasting results. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So knowing that when when you practice that, when we practice it, we are expanding our window of tolerance, right? So in, instead of like one little thing just setting it off, setting us off, we're just expanding our capacity to process in real time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it also helps us support to show up in the way that we want to in our business and the way that we want to with our clients and the people that work with us. Um, But it definitely starts with us first. Um, Daily gratitude and breathing. Excellent. Well, I'll go ahead and look. Oh, uh, the importance of boundaries. A hundred percent. That's a whole other topic. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Next talk. (laughs) Yeah. Especially as business owners, both Terry and I, this is one topic that we've talked a lot about, (laughs) talked a lot about is how do we create those healthy boundaries for ourselves and for our business. Um, Distracting oneself from uncomfortable thoughts about the future and redirecting oneself to the present. Yes. The present is everything. Yeah. So this is um, how you can get in touch with Terry and I um, if, if you want to explore any of these topics that we've talked about today. Um, we're open to brainstorming with you or answering any questions that you might have. And if we don't have the answers to it, we will um, work diligently um, to help provide that with you and for you. So um, in our last few moments of today's conversation, what questions do you have? What thoughts do you have? Or what would you like to express um, as far as a learning today? As people think about their questions, I'll just mention that I have in the chat box um, dropped the email for the university's counseling department uh, for anyone who wants to utilize that resource. And I would like to express gratitude to both of you for um, your time today and um, leading this presentation. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah, I love to do this. So, Yeah, I just want to say, extend the same sentiments. This is really helpful. Um, I think often, you know, just mental wellness takes a back burner for a lot of people, especially when you're in survival mode and figuring out like, how to, you know, make money or pay your employees and things like that. And so it's a really important invitation to pause and, um, you know, hopefully proactively think about these things before, you know, we're in a situation of like debilitating stress or anxiety or depression. And um, so, yeah, thank you. It's a wonderful invitation to just like pause and be present and then think about incorporating these practices into our lives for ourselves and then for those around us. Yeah. Thank you, Morgan. Um, So I'm just going to read this here um, from Reese. So thank you. Um, We very much appreciate your time today. And we've been looking forward to forward for resources for employees. We have found that some feel more comfortable discussing needs than others, and some are very private, so having a lot of options is important. I also want to mention that Calm Harm is a great app for 5 or 15 minute uh, distraction expression uh, to use to interrupt when stress starts to pull you into a spiral. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Thank you, Reese. I appreciate that. (laughs) She's frozen. Nope, we lost her, looks like. (laughs) Oh, well, thank you again. The joys, the joys of virtual. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everyone. Well, feel free to reach out to Terry and I, um, as you think about this, the the things we've talked about today, we would welcome that and encourage you to, um, we're here to brainstorm with you, provide resources if we can. Um, and we just thank you for showing up for yourself, um, for your community and for the people that you work with. So thank you so much, Caleb, for the invitation. 
Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for uh, participating today. Thank you all, of course, for leading this presentation. This video, uh, once we get it up on our YouTube, get a YouTube link, we'll embed it on our website, startupjunkie.org, so you can uh, anybody can access it, uh, share it, and uh, we'll also have it available on our Facebook page uh, as a Facebook Live video as well. So, and um, if anybody would like, um, I guess, an email with y'all's information on it, I would be happy to send that out to the attendees as well. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you. Everybody have a great day. Bye, everybody.